Great. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Chapter 13, The Power of Decision. This is a chapter that has a bit of everything in it. Uh, journaling and practical forgiveness, really working it. There's a experience in here of, because that question comes up quite often, how do I forgive? And there's um, just a demonstration in here of really working it from the surface perception of an upset uh, around temperature and being stuck in a, in a car without air conditioning in Florida in the summer in a heat wave. So just really working it down through the layers of the mind, through thought and facing emotion and core beliefs right down to desire, which is really where the shift happens when you can really get honest and say, what is my desire for? Is it truly for the peace of God or for something in the world to change? So yeah, and just a lot more undoing, just real undoing of the self concept, and which is facing the fear of sacrifice, uh, losing my life as I know it, and also some beautiful moments of peace. Thank God for those. Yeah. And those moments of peace, just, I love just reading through this and revisiting them because when there's a moment, like you can really feel it, that a true moment of the peace of God is, is touching on eternity. It's, it's, it's touching on a peace that is, that is eternal. It's, it's everything in that moment. So very grateful for these readings. <laughs> it's like revisiting and 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 it feels very quantum because it's it, it's like the same moment. You can drop it at the same the same moment, the same experience. Yeah, right right now. Okay, so we'll just take a moment of just to drop into stillness and then we'll begin the reading. Thank you. Okay, chapter 13, Power of Decision, Fall 2005. And we start with a quote from the text of A Course in Miracles that again just sets up the whole chapter. Being afraid seems to be involuntary something beyond your own control. My control can take over everything that does not matter, while my guidance can direct everything that does, if you so choose. The presence of fear shows that you have raised body thoughts to the level of the mind. The correction of fear is your responsibility. You should ask for help in the conditions that have brought the fear about. These conditions always entail a willingness to be separate. Before you choose to do anything, 
Ask me if your choice is in accord with mine. If you are sure that it is, there will be no fear. Drop it. The following discussion was with the Holy Spirit as I sat in the car with David en route to our next destination. I felt slightly grumpy because I'd experienced full-on dreams all night and I'd not had time for my morning journaling. It seemed like I'd missed out and I didn't want to read and write in the car. Journaling, Kirsten, good morning, Holy Spirit. What can you tell me about my mood? Holy Spirit, drop it. Kirsten, okay. <laughs> Anything else? A smile spread across my face. Holy Spirit, have a wonderful day. My day was wonderful. It was full of laughter and experiences of oneness. The ego is laughable and should never, under any circumstances, be taken seriously. <laughs> Peace to the world. Journaling. Kirsten. Good morning, Holy Spirit. What would you have me do or read? Holy Spirit, read in the manual for teachers. How is peace possible in this world? It felt very deep. I had some tears while reading this section and the following writing flowed from my pen. Peace to the world. The Lord has come. I remember God. I feel his love, his peace, his presence. I take him with me. I bring the thought of God with me. I am the holy child of God sharing peace and love with my brothers. I will turn to the peace of God if ever the thought of death enters my mind. Heaven is brought to earth by my remembrance of God. The thought of God is peace. I am the thought of God. Therefore, I am peace eternal, and I bring heaven to earth by my very presence. I choose only love. I choose only peace. I choose to hear God's voice, and therefore to bring heaven to earth. Amen. Carried in the love of God. David and I drove south to Georgia, where we had a weekend of gatherings at the home of dear friends. Journaling, Kirsten. Good morning, Holy Spirit. What a wonderful weekend. I felt as if I were floating most of the time. A misty white light embraced everyone and everything, and golden light glowed brightly around the trees, 
framing the gatherings. When speaking, I had no awareness of myself as a body. The messages and parables simply flowed through me. The weekend was a beautiful meditation, consisting of music, discussions, shared meals, laughter, silence. I sank into deep stillness as this writing flowed through my mind and pen. I am the child of God. I reflect the love of God. No longer do I believe myself to be a body. No longer am I limited. I have been set free. The end of the world. Today the world ended in my awareness, washed away in the knowledge that the Son of God is innocent. It is that simple. While this realization was coming to me, our host was looking deep into her mind and asking why the world seemed such a painful place to be. As I was writing about how the Son of God is innocent, she realized the only reason for all pain, suffering and fear was the deep-seated belief in guilt. I read, How Will the World End? in the Manual for Teachers. In deep prayer, I realized the truth. A state of profound peace radiated throughout my being as these thoughts and realizations flowed through my mind. The Son of God is innocent. With this prayer is judgment ended. The Son of God is innocent. With this statement, the awareness that all things work together for good brings the world to an end. The world is saved from what I believed it to be. Right now, words cannot describe how I feel. The world is over. I have fulfilled my function. My function was forgiveness. And the world has been forgiven. The Son of God is innocent. It doesn't matter what seems to play out in the world now. Never again can I be deceived. All of my experience has brought me to this moment, to this awareness. I am blessed.
body thoughts in the power of the mind. Journaling, Kirsten. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I would like another assignment. I'm aware that when I feel pain in my body, my mind immediately becomes occupied with thinking about how to fix it. I'd like to focus on the deep teaching from the Course. The presence of fear shows that you have raised body thoughts to the level of the mind. I think this will help me to let go of the preoccupying body thoughts that lead me away from feeling connected to you. What do you think about this idea? Holy Spirit, wonderful. Kirsten, is there something I can tell myself without falling into denial each time I experience subtle body aches and limitations? Holy Spirit, repeat your goal and bring your awareness to your changing mind. Say, I seem to be experiencing body pain, but the body is not causative, nor is the environment. I'm willing to release this thought entirely. Kirsten, thank you, that's perfect. I acknowledge the thought, raise it up in awareness, and hand it over to you with a willingness to be wrong about it. This way I stop drawing conclusions about my body, its limitations, and the effects my actions and circumstances have upon it. Anything else you can tell me? A familiar feeling of stiffness in my neck occurs. Kirsten, okay Holy Spirit, here it is now. My neck is stiff, and when I go to a chiropractor, the pain seems to be released. I want to go to a chiropractor. I give this to you. I can see that I'm raising body thoughts to the level of mind right now. I went into prayer and could feel that my perception of what causes body pain ran very, very deep. I am a body, and my neck is stiff, and it is affecting me. I cannot be at peace like this, were my thoughts. I could see that I had been holding on to conclusions about what causes body pain and how it could be healed proving over and over to myself that body thoughts were real. Kirsten, wow. So I'm guessing that I will be free of body limitations entirely by practicing this. Holy Spirit, it's all thought. The body is a thought. Pain, aches, muscles reasons for pain, etc., are all thoughts. The entire world and cosmos consists of layer upon layer of thoughts. By releasing the chain of thoughts, you are freeing the mind to be in the present moment. The body can then be perceived as a temporary holy home for the Son of God, and no longer a prison in which you feel trapped. Free your mind. Cut the strings. You are not a puppet at the mercy of the body. You are spirit. Divine mind. You've been deciding upon your goal and then setting about achieving it. When you notice that the goal no longer serves you, such as when you are experiencing body pain, you change your goal. You have many goals that are not in alignment with divine mind. And as you bring them to me, with the readiness and willingness to release them, you will free yourself of the belief that you are not free. 
Kirsten, I feel really excited about this. Holy Spirit. Wonderful. Hot thoughts. David and I drove south towards Florida, where a very excited group of friends had arranged a series of 10 gatherings at various unity churches and course groups. As we entered the state of Florida, the air conditioning in our car broke. I asked David if we would get it fixed. And he said that it could be expensive. So we would wait to see if an air conditioning shop presented itself in a clear and obvious way. Attack thoughts and feelings of grievance ran through my mind. Why can't we get it fixed immediately? David isn't with me in this. I don't agree with waiting to see if getting it fixed is obvious. I need air conditioning. Why am I in this country? New Zealand is nothing like this. David is tight with money. I would just get it fixed. <laughs> I attempted to forgive the thoughts and feelings of discomfort by silently giving them over to the Holy Spirit. But I was struggling with the heat and with deep resistance in my mind. I could feel the intensity of the ego wanting to justify something. As the traffic grew heavier, I could feel that more than wanting to let go of the attack thoughts in my mind about the heat, I wanted David to know that I was very uncomfortable and needed the air conditioning fixed. I made a few comments about how hot it was and how there wasn't any breeze at all and how I hoped that we could get the AC repaired. As we continued to sit in the traffic, I fantasized about stopping in a restaurant for a cool drink. It seemed that David and I were not on the same page. I could feel a sense of separation from him and was afraid to risk suggesting that we stop somewhere in case that was not guided and I turned out to be wrong. I didn't know what to do. All I could say was, it's so hot. By now, sweat was forming a little pool down my shirt and, had, and I had my feet up on the dashboard. In response to my comment about the heat, David looked directly at me with his piercingly bright blue eyes and said, Oh, you're having hot thoughts. My initial inner response was one of disbelief. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Of course I'm having hot thoughts. Who is this man? How could he not be affected by the sweltering heat? He isn't human. Then it clicked. He isn't human. The one who was speaking wasn't coming from a human perspective. Somehow, through my foggy, heat-affected, unhappy state of mind, I caught a glimpse of something. 
a wisp of a distant memory. I could hardly catch hold of it. It was like a thin piece of string blowing in the breeze. I forced, or I focused my mind with all of the desire I could muster. Turning it away from these grievance thoughts and in the direction of receiving help. The thin string transformed into a rope and I grabbed hold. I looked past the victimization feelings and closed my eyes. I went into prayer, asking to see my underlying beliefs. The following beliefs rose up and I was willing to be wrong about each of them in order to have them lifted from my mind. I believe I am hot because the sun is beating down on the car and I am willing to be wrong about this. I couldn't imagine what difference it would make to say I was wrong about this because it was so obviously a fact that it was hot. I believe I am hot because we are in Florida in a heat wave with no air conditioning. Holy Spirit, I'm willing to be wrong about this. I still felt like a non-believer. I believe I am hot because sweat is dripping from my body. We are stuck in traffic. I can see the tarmac melting and heat waves rising from the car. I dropped deeper into how I felt and got in touch with fear. I'm afraid that the heat is hurting and damaging me. I want to see this differently. I'm still affected by this world. I get headaches and I want to protect myself. I want to give this belief to you, Holy Spirit. I could feel the tension lifting from my mind. And right as I gave over the last thought to the Holy Spirit, a cool breeze floated in through my open window kissing me on the cheek. I laughed out loud, delighted. A cool breeze, I exclaimed. David, right as I gave over my hot thoughts, a cool breeze came. David was just as delighted as I was. We beamed with joy, reminded yet again of how loved we are and how everything works together for the highest good. To go through the fire in my mind and pop out the other side of such intensity felt huge for me. It was a miracle. Minutes later, the traffic disappeared and we were on the open highway. Windows rolled down and the music turned up. We sang along happily and enjoyed the rest of the drive together. Is this my life? When we arrived at our destination, our excited hosts and organizers greeted us warmly. 
Although I fell in love with everyone I met, I felt concerned, noticing that the average age was about 75. All of my new friends had white hair and drove slowly. They talked about losing their glasses and running out of time. Thoughts of sacrifice arose. Oh my God, is this my life? Would I ever dance to techno music again? Would I have friends to take long, brisk walks with? It seemed I had no control over my life. Yes, I was willing to give it all over to the spirit. And actually, I didn't want to go out dancing to techno music. But I did feel the intensity of having a split mind. I hid my unspiritual thoughts. And I found myself secretly praying for people closer to my own age to show up. I went into prayer and released my age-related thoughts to the spirit. I prayed to be shown that age means nothing and that there truly is no sacrifice. I observed David as he tirelessly met with one group of excited Course in Miracles students after another. I noticed that as the youngest member of the group, sometimes by 30 years, it was me who lagged behind. I was the only one disappearing for afternoon naps. David lovingly called our friends elderly beamers, meaning course students over the age of 75 who beamed with light and joy. They no longer felt personally responsible for looking after the world and had no interest in working towards future goals or caring about fashion. They were happy. <laughs> We stayed in a friend's retirement village where the speed limit was five miles per hour. The residents rode around on large tricycles, taking gifts of food to one another. By the time we left Florida, I could happily have stayed there forever. <laughs> mm. Floating in Christ, I was coming undone. We were a third of the way through a seven-month trip, and I didn't know if I was going to make it. I had no control over what I wore or ate, where I went, or whether I exercised. I felt like a ball of string that was being unwound. I feared that if I kept unwinding at this pace, there would be nothing left of me at all. Friends had offered us a condominium by the ocean where we could rest for three days between gatherings. One day, going down to the pool, I was feeling emotional. As David approached me in the water, I had a memory of being in the ocean with my brothers. Occasionally, they playfully dunked me under the water. Feeling vulnerable, I was frightened that David would do the same thing to me. 
As he moved towards me with arms outstretched, he paused and asked if I was okay. Are you going to dunk me under? I asked in a wavery voice. He looked at me with such love and kindness and said, oh no, I would never do that. He wrapped his arms around me there in the pool and I allowed the tears to fall. I felt held in the arms of God. After the tears subsided, David floated me slowly around the pool for a long time. My world was being retranslated from one of shocks and unexpected surprises to one of tenderness and the utmost care. Each time I experienced a major shift in my perception about myself or the world, I felt the effect within my mind on a deep level. The grip of knowing who I was in relation to the world was loosening. Thank you for joining everyone.